Greetings YouTube and welcome back to another vlog. So it's been a while, hasn't it? And I apologise for not uploading as much as I would like to. It's been a stressful a few weeks for me. And uh, thankfully I've got a bit more time or so. I'll try and upload as much and as best as I, as I can. So I thought today I'd come back, come back and do another vlog. And uh, yeah, I've got some stuff written down on a piece of paper because uh, I've got a few topics that I want to discuss. So anyway, how are you all doing? I hope everyone is doing great. I'm not doing too bad. It's just been a bit stressful because I've not been able to get any time off or I've had the uh, I've had the best weeks. But yeah, oh, things are things are getting better. So anyway. Let's crack on with the video, and then we'll get on the first topic, which I'm going to be careful how I say things, because I mean, this is quite a controversial topic. Yeah, I, I usually like to try and say it how it is, but I do have to be a bit more selective what I have to say here, because I understand that everyone's views on this certain topic may, be a, may vary from mine, which... Uh, is understandable and uh, I will not begrudge anyone for having a different viewpoint. So anyway, uh, yeah, there's certain sort of subject that I want to talk about. And um, I, I know it, it's it been going on for like a week. But yeah, so uh, something has happened uh, with the BBC. So uh, what has happened was... Uh, yeah, there, there, there was a certain there was a presenter who, uh, yeah, who got suspended by the BBC for apparently send, uh, yeah, for apparently uh, paying uh, an underage uh, person uh, to to send them uh, indecent images and uh, and they've offered which they've offered them money, and uh, since then a few other people have uh, come forward to uh, call out this and yeah it turned out that this uh, suspended presenter after all the allegations uh, which uh, from what I from what I've seen have proven to be true and uh, that uh, presenter not one I was expecting to be honest with you he was the last person that I had mentioned though quite a few people even a few work colleagues mentioned this person but I was like no nah, it can't be him yeah, and it was. It's it. It's a the BBC presenter Hugh Edwards. Now I just can't. I just can't see it being him. But yeah. But from all, all the stuff that we've seen on the BBC News and uh, all the other news outlets, yeah, he, he got a uh, he got found out. So yeah, it for the few days. Uh, it was a bit suspicious, so it, it meant that other presenters would would start to worry and start thinking, "Oh, I don't, I don't want people to think that I'm this uh, horrible person." Yeah, who would think I would do a thing like that? But yeah, but it turned out it was a Hugh Edwards, Hugh Edwards, sorry, who of course he had, I know he he had to go to hospital for a mental health issue, which I mean. From what I've heard, he's had a few problems, but I'm sorry, you cannot use your mental health as an excuse to ask an underage person to send you pictures by giving them, by offering them money. And this 17 year old, well, at the time, well, well, they were 17 at the time, they're now 20. Yeah, because of this, apparently they, they turned to drugs and they haven't been the same person again, according to his family. And yeah, I know there's been a few other victims uh, coming forward. So that's really that. And uh, I gotta be honest with you. Um, th this is just my opinion. Um, but I will I will ask you this. Um, should he have been named and shamed, or kept as uh, a private matter between the uh, between said parties and the police? I mean. If you were uh, want to think that the matter should be uh, kept private, then that that's uh, entirely entirely fine. I get that, 
But to me, I gotta be honest with you, uh, scumbags like that should be named and shamed. They have to be because uh, it'll. Uh, uh, how can I put it? it it'll. In I'm trying. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to be as careful with this as possible because it, it's a touchy subject. Yeah, what they should want them because it up. Otherwise, I mean, more people will come forward, which uh, I'm sure there will be. But, yeah. But if, if you don't name and shame these people, then it's going to cause more grief for, for, for those victims who have suffered. I know I understand why people would not want it to be discussed on the television and all that. I get that, but I don't know. You, you cannot uh, defend scumbags. You cannot just sweep it under the mat and uh, leave it as it is because it will cause trauma in the long time. I I know. I, I think they should. And you know what? They should be named and shamed as well because, uh, because uh, a lot of us have to pay the TV license, which, uh, is, uh, which, is, uh, which belongs to the BBC. We have to pay for them. Oh, yeah, so we're, we're paying for uh, those sickos like that. I don't know. It just makes me uh, want to throw up everywhere. It's just absolutely revolting. I don't know where. I know. I feel sorry for Hugh's wife. I really do. Yeah. I don't know. If, if, I, was, if I was his wife... Um, I, I divorce him immediately. I don't. I don't care if he's had mental health problems. There is just no. It's no excuse in this uh, society to get away with uh, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, well, we we know stuff about Jimmy Savile, and obviously it's not as severe as that, but it's still extremely scummy. So that's that. So uh, I understand. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry about that. I nearly uh, knocked uh, the piece of paper over. So anyway, next uh, I will show you my uh, pickups, and uh, I've got I've got a few right here, and uh, yeah I've got well there's, there's well I've got seven pickups though one of them I bought a few months ago and I completely forgot about it, but I've got um there, there's one Blu-ray. And there are five VHS tapes because remember in the last vlog I said I was going to get into collecting VHS again, which is what I've done. So yeah, let's have a look at what um, stuff I bought. So first one is a game. Well, well, the four games in this uh, compilation pack uh, for the Commodore sixty four, and it's called and it's a one hundred percent dynamite. So. Yeah, I mean the box itself isn't in great condition, but the games and everything are in there. So yeah, so the games that are here are Double Dragon, Last Ninja 2, Afterburner, yeah, which is of course the European version, there, there's a difference between that and the American one, and uh, Wek Le Mans, or is it Way Le Mans, I don't know, or is it WEC Le Mans, I don't bloody know. But yeah, I'll uh, have a look at the games. I mean, I'll talk about the games as well. So yeah, we'll we'll, we'll talk about Double Dragon. Now I got to be honest with you, I am a ma I love Double Dragon. I am a massive fan of the game, even like especially Double Dragon Two. Yeah, this was one one of the very first games I ever played because uh, my brother had Double Dragon One and Two for his NES. And yeah, I've always liked them games. And then uh, when that when that game get well, I mean it was a, I mean the arcade game was all right. The Master System one was pretty good, but I was like liked on the NES. But when it came to the microcomputers, what the actual fuck went on? Oh my dear lord, they absolutely dropped the bloody ball on it. Yeah. What the hell? The Commodore 64 version of Double Dragon is a massive piece of shit, and uh, you should avoid it at all costs. The music, 
is fantastic. It's by Maniacs and Noise member Charles Dean. And great music. That's the only thing that it's got going for it because it is, it is just, it's absolutely atrocious. I mean, I know there was a dub, there was Double Dragon 2 which got ported onto the Commodore 64 and they actually did a good job with that. Double Dragon 3 is just shit all across the board, including the original arcade. Yeah, Double Dragon, just load up for the music and that's it. Just don't bother playing it because it controls and looks like total shit. So there we go. Uh, the other game is Afterburner. And you know what? I like Afterburner, I do, but it's one of those games that I cannot play for more than 5 or 10 minutes before I start feeling a bit motion sick, if you know what I mean, just because the way you, 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 you carry it, well, well, you're playing whatever, you fight a jet goes across the screen when it goes upside down and stuff like that, I cannot play it too long before I start feeling a bit queasy, but, and you know what? I mean, the Commodore 64 version, it's ambitious. They, they gave it a good go, but you know what? It's not the greatest of games, but it's not outright terrible. It's just mediocre. I think they tried, but I mean, it, it's certainly, uh, I mean, it's certainly punched above its weight, that's for sure. But yeah, it doesn't have the best gameplay, but yeah, that's that. We'll talk about that. Uh, then we have Weck Le Mans or what, whatever. Well, the Le Mans game, anyway. Um, it's not. It's not too bad, actually. Not my favourite version, though, if I'm being truthful. That would have to go to the ZX Spectrum one. Even the Amstrad one is slightly better, but it's not bad on the Commodore 64. Though overtaking the car can be a bit troublesome because sometimes uh, yeah, the width of your car may end up colliding with another. So you have to be a bit careful when going around corners and when to overtake. But yeah, it, it's not a bad game at all. Yeah, and the, the intro music is uh, a banger as well. Jonathan Dunn. So that's uh, that. And then the last game. And probably the be probably the reason why I bought this pack to begin with and is by far the best game on it. Last Ninja 2. Yeah. What what can I say about it? Yes, I know the controls might be a little bit finicky at first, but once you get the hang of it, it is really good. I mean Yeah, I absolutely uh I enjoy most of those games. This one is probably my favourite of the lot. Phenomenal soundtrack composed by Matt Gray. Graphics beautiful. And uh, yeah, it's got it it is a is a really challenging game. I haven't completed it yet, but I mean it, it's fun. It really is. And uh well that's if you're into uh, games like that, because I know some people are not as keen on them as others. So that's really that. And uh, yeah, that's uh, it for the games. Because I haven't really bought anything else since that. But, like I say, I forgot I had this, so I had to go rooting. And I had to look on one of my pre on a few of my blogs to see if I did upload it then. Well, it turns out I didn't. So, uh, I've made up for lost ground here, so that's that. And now we're on to the movies. And, uh, well, one of them isn't the movie, but we'll get to that in a bit. But yeah, we'll get to the first one, which is a Blu-ray, uh, so uh, we're going to 1998 for this uh, masterpiece of a film. Yeah, it's a film by the legendary Coen Brothers, and it is, of course, uh, it is, of course, The Big Lebowski. Absolutely phenomenal movie. One of the best movies I've ever watched in my entire life. I am not, I am not lying about this at all. I think this is a absolutely brilliant film i love it so yeah yeah i even though i'm not, i know the the thing is i'm not the biggest uh, john goodman fan but in this film he's absolutely brilliant as is uh, jeff bridges yeah so uh it's yeah, the 
the premise of this film is because it says on the back here, The Big Lebowski is a hilarious, quirky comedy about bowling, surf town, white Russian, white Russians, and the guy named the dude, which is, of course, played by you. Yeah, the dude, uh, Jeff Lebowski, doesn't want any drama in his life. Heck, he can't be bothered with the job. But he must embark on the quest with his bowling buddies after his rug is destroyed in a twisted case of mistaken identity. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I cannot uh, recommend this film enough. If you haven't watched it, though, yeah, absolutely fantastic. 10 out of 10 all day. I mean, I mean, some people might find that film a bit overrated, but I don't know. I've always loved it. Um, I first watched this when I was about... How old was I? I don't know. About 14, 15 years ago. 14, 15 years old. So that's that. And uh, I'm hoping to, to give it a watch again because uh, it's utterly brilliant. So now we're on to the VHS tapes. And the uh, uh, first film, I've never seen this one before, but I've always been intrigued to. So here we go. This is a, a, we're going to say 1991 for this. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, starring the uh, Cuba Good, uh, C Cuba Goody Junior, which is of course Ice Cube, and it is of course uh, the the legendary film. From what I've heard, this film is absolutely brilliant. So, I don't. I've always wanted to watch this for the longest time, and that is a uh, it's Boys in the Hood. So, uh, I I'm looking forward to watching this because. Uh, I don't know, it, it's one that, I don't know, it's one film I've avoided for the longest time, and I don't know why. I've avoided it despite always wanting to watch it. Yeah, so, uh, from, yeah, so the, the story of this film, according to the, the, according to the back of this tape, because I haven't even watched the film yet, I'm looking forward to, uh, it says, uh, raised yeah, raised by the firm hand of his father, future, futures, I don't even know. If, um, Bertus, I probably butchered that uh, name up, I do apologise, never seen the film before. Trey Styles is a good boy growing up in a bad neighbourhood. A hood where gangs with guns cruise the block and helicopters hover constantly overhead. Sick of the sound of gunfire and seeing the the friends getting shot. Trey and his friends Doughboy and Rick struggle to survive the heat on the street where friendship, pain, love and danger combine to to form a frightening reality set to a streetwise soundtrack uh, featuring Ice Cube Boys in the Boys in the Hood is a startling portrayal of surviving of survival in the community let loose on itself. So I don't I I, I won't mind listening I won't mind watching that. I mean I don't I quite like a lot of like the rap and hip hop music from the early nineties. I mean you usually don't see me as that sort of person but I don't know I do like a few of Ice Cube songs. And uh, a lot of music from around that era as well. I don't know why I got to a lot of those songs thanks to playing the uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. So that's that. And now we've got two movies from the same series. And uh, they're, they're, they're both absolutely fantastic. Though I think the first one is slightly better, but I still recommend both of them. And it is, of course, uh, Lethal Weapon 1 and 2. So that's that. So, yeah, the, the original Lethal Weapon, though, absolutely fantastic. With, uh, yeah, Mel, Mel Gibson and uh, Danny Glover, of course. But, I mean, I know I might try and look for Lethal Weapon 3 as well, because I do like that one. I just think these two were better. I haven't seen Lethal Weapon 4, so uh, I don't even know if I should or shouldn't. Yeah, so uh, it so uh, lethal weapon uh, the the plot uh, for those who haven't seen it, though I I highly recommend that you should. 
Yeah, Mel Gibson is L.A. Cop Martin Riggs. Re Reckless, Relentless and Lethal. He's Vietnam and Sub-Zero Flashpoint. Or a Violet. I don't know. Oh, Volatile, sorry. You know from the bloody read. Yeah, our Volatile, our volatile uh, combination for a man with such chilling credentials. Recently widowed, Riggs is a time bomb waiting to explode. The only question is who will he take with him? Riggs's new partner, Roger. Yeah. Murtaugh, yeah, I'm sorry, just uh, I, pro I'm, I know I've mispronounced his name because uh, I haven't watched these films in years, but I still know they're absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it's his partner Roger Fizz. He may know, he he knows the answer. Mel Gibson and Danny Glover's unlikely partnership takes cop thrillers into a new dimension. Lethal weapons, her trigger, excitement, and stunning sir. Uh, Set pieces perfectly frame the, the Gibbs and Glover relationship so that the film will not only be remembered as a super thriller but also one of the uh, great buddy buddy movies, which it is. I, I just uh, I, I just love uh, it's just a great film, though. So, uh, of course, uh, then there's the Lethal Weapon 2, which, which again is very good. Yeah, badder and madder than ever, Reckless Riggs and the Mellow Murto return to smash a drugs the syndicate led by a ruthless South African politician. Hiding behind diplomatic immunity, his arrest seems impossible, a world these detectives refuse to uh, understand. And off they go, into romance, danger and more die-hard action than than even they can handle. But yeah, I mean, it, it's again a fantastic film, though. Like I say, the first one is better, but well, no, the first one is my favorite, so there you go. And now we're at 1997. A, cer a certain film starring Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith. Yeah, I think you know which one it is. It, it, need, it needs no introduction. Men in Black. Yeah. I grew up with this film. I this was one of this was one film me and my brother used to watch all the time. And I think that yeah, I know my brother was a massive fan of Will Smith. I know we had one of his uh, he had one of his CDs as a kid, which had like uh, the songs like "Welcome to Miami" on it, and uh, just the two of us. But you know what? I I mean, Will Smith is a bit hit or miss for me. Well, well he. He was a massive hit for Chris Rock, all right. No, we're not. We're not going there. Okay. So yeah, I I don't. I absolutely love this film. But I tried. What I I remember watching Men in Black two, as a kid as well. I remember watching that. And I didn't like it. I gave it another try. Still didn't like it. But yeah, the Men in Black three. Never watched it. But the original. I I mean, this is probably my favorite. Film with uh, Will Smith and uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, it says on the back here. Uh, they are the best kept secret in the universe. Working as a highly funded yet unofficial government agency. K. And J. Are the men in black. Providers of the of immigration services. And the regulators of all things alien on Earth. They are your best, last and only line of defense. They work in this, they work in secret, dress in black. They are the men in black. Protecting the Earth from the scum of the universe. I mean, it is it's just a it's just a fun movie, it really is. And now uh, what one one thing uh, it also it also includes uh the music video of the song Men in Black. I mean, for for those who don't know, I mean, Men in Black is a, a cover of uh, Forget Me Nots, which uh, yeah is a song from like nineteen eighty two. But I don't know. I, I I've always liked this film. 
I know. I know it has like a sticker on it from, from Domino's Pizza. Yeah. See inside for a great uh, Domino's offers. Don't do well that. Oh yeah. Offer closes December the 1st, 1998. So yeah, for me, we I don't fancy eating a pizza that's about 25 years old. Yeah, so. How's that? Yeah. I mean, absolutely brilliant. And uh, last but not least, I mean, this isn't a film. I mean, I bought the second one in this uh, particular series uh, last time. So I decided to get the first one because it's my personal favourite. Even though I know the second one is better in terms of production because obviously it was on a higher budget. But yeah, so uh, we have got, yeah, we have got Wallace and Gromit, A Grand Day Out. Yeah, this is my personal favourite Wallace and Gromit. Probably the one I have seen the most. Yeah. I just, I just absolutely love, I absolutely love Wallace and Gromit, you know, that, well, well, the, the first three ones, I mentioned it last time, this one, a, a, this one, which is a grand day out, the wrong trousers and a close shave, but, you know what, for, for me, I mean, this is quintessential British, I don't know, just, I don't know, I just, I grew up loving Wallace and Gromit, so, yeah. And then speaking of that, apparently they're going to make another one. But I don't know, it won't be the same because obviously he hasn't got Peter Salas in it anymore because he passed away quite a few years ago. Because he did the voice for, uh, for Wallace. And I just, I just can't see myself watching the new Wallace and Gromit because apparently that's coming out next year, I believe. But yeah, apparently uh, yeah, the, the budget on this one for a grand out yeah, it only cost him like about three hundred pounds or something like that. Where like the road trousers cost something like three million to like uh, create. But yeah, I mean, who knew that uh, with limited was uh, limited resources and uh, a a bit of uh, clay and plaster scene. Who knew that for a while to grow it would become the phenomenon phenomenon that it would. I know, I know it's 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 only a short one. It was only twenty two minutes long, but I don't know. It just it, it's just it's just timeless though. But I mean, yes, I I I I agree that the wrong trousers is probably the best made one, but this one's but this one's got a charm to it that makes me love this one more than the others. Yeah, there's something I know. It, there's some it's, there's, there's some cheapness about it, but you know what? I don't I don't care at all. I do not. So that's uh, yeah, was the Gromit and Grande, uh, and that is all the pickups for today. So anyway, um, now uh, I'm going to talk about what I've been watching. God, be honest with you, I've not watched an awful lot this week. To be truthful with you. Been far too busy to uh, do what do what I usually like doing, so not had much time to relax. But anyway, so uh, yeah, so uh, so uh, I'll, I'll talk about a, a TV show that I used to love watching first, and then I'll talk about what I've watched on YouTube. Or so anyway, uh, we'll get we'll talk about a. a a TV show that I have not watched for the longest time possible, but I know I decided to watch it again because I, I remember absolutely enjoying this show. Well, the first six series, and then it just went, it, it went shit after that, but yeah. But yeah, what one uh, sitcom that I was watching again, because I, I forgot how funny it was to begin with. But I, I know that some people probably find it. Found this show a bit shit or a bit, I don't know, not not for them really. Got an itchy head anyway. So, anyway, so the show that I was watching uh, was a uh, two pints of lager and a packet of crisp, which uh, yeah, I I do I decided to watch that show again. And you know what? I forgot how funny the older episodes were. 
for me anyway, I've, I've always uh, enjoyed it. So yeah, but yeah, I know it's a it's a sitcom uh, based in Runcorn, which of course, uh, I, I mean, I mean, I I live across from Runcorn, across the the River Mersey, so yeah. But I mean, I used to like watch that show, not just for the characters, which I will like uh, elaborate into a minute, but. I know I used to like watch it and see like all the sites of like a uh, uh, run con and all that. Lot. I mean, I, I'm from Witness, but you know, it's always interesting to see, uh, yeah, what what run con used to look like because I mean, it has changed a little bit over the years, but yeah, it, it's an absolutely fantastic show where. Uh, and uh, Ralph Little, who of course uh, played uh, Anthony in uh, the Royal Family, he he's in the show as the character Johnny. I know he, he he's he's just his usual self though. But when 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 he uh, when he got killed in the last episode of the series six, yeah, the show just wasn't the same with him. He was probably the best character in the show. I know, and I know that he like. Uh, I, I don't know the humor in it, even though it's very two thousands. It's humor that I miss because uh, because I used to like hearing uh, cause certain stuff uh, that uh, they would say reminds me of some of the stuff that I used to say when I was a kid or uh, in my teenage years. Yeah, I know where the the humor for in the show is like. I mean, it's a uh, it it's a uh, I've done the humor. Uh, how can I put it? It's aimed at a certain demographic, especially those who are like, uh, like teenagers or those in the the very early twenties. I don't. I just. Uh, I just find it a wholesome show. Yeah, and then there's a, yeah. The the other character I like is uh, I like all the characters in the show, though. Uh, I mean, I also like uh, the mechanic Gaz, who of course is, who he was played by Will Meller. Of course, before that he was in uh, he was in Hollyoaks. Of course, he's been in a few other stuff, but I don't know. He is I, I don't know some some of the stuff he says is absolutely hilarious. In fact, uh, yeah, they even did a few songs as well in the program which are absolutely hilarious. Like uh, yeah, the song uh, Gaz and uh, yeah Gaz and Johnny did the uh, the biscuit rap. The first time I saw that. I was in absolute agony. I made my sides were well split. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, YouTube it. It, it is uh, it is boss. But I don't know. It, it's it, I've always liked the show. And of course, you got like the other characters. You got a uh, Donna who, uh, who of course, so she was a, uh, she was with Gaz, and then the uh, they they ended up uh, they ended up splitting up. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to think who played the role as her. Yeah, Natalie Casey, that's her name. Um, and then, of course, uh, then there's the character, Janet, who... I mean, I I used to think she was fit, though. Where, uh, but, I mean, I mean, she was played by uh, Sheridan Smith. I mean, she's been in God knows how many programs, her. I know she, she's a very uh, talented uh, actress, though. She's been in God knows how many programs. I know she was in the... She was also in the Royal Family with uh, Ralph Little. As well, so of course they know each other. I, I know, but I mean, even the that was just a. I mean, I I don't know the the the, the interaction that the characters have. I don't know. I don't know. It just reminds me of. It just reminds me of uh, my neck of the woods. Even though, uh, like I say, I'm not from Ron I'm from Witness, but. I don't know, in some ways it just reminds you of stuff that you used to see in your area during the 2000s. I don't know, there's something about that uh, particular era that I I miss. Something that, um, I don't know, something that I can't ever see being replicated again. And then the other character, who is of course uh, Louise, uh, Played by Catherine uh, Drydale, I think her name is. Yeah, I know. Uh, 
I oh, know she she's a she's a bit of a tart. Let's be honest with you. I know we. I know she's always. Uh, I mean, she's always dressing. Um, I don't know. Well, we're dressing like a tart, basically a bit of a lapper, but but I mean, she. I know she she's she's dumb and ditzy, but absolutely hilarious at the same time. But I mean, I'm I haven't even I haven't got the show on the uh, haven't got the show on like DVD or anything like that. I need to find the box set that because I was watching a few of the episodes on BBC Three because I thought you know what, there's nothing on. I just flick it through the channels hoping to find something and then voila, two pints were on. Yeah, I mean if you haven't watched it, I'd say give it a go. It may not be your cup of tea, but I personally like it. Only the first six series though. And that's that. So now uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, what I've been watching on YouTube. I've only got two things written down for this. So on Sunday, I was on Main Meister Street. Though I had to, uh, I had to leave a bit earlier because I had to uh, be at work on the Monday. So yeah, he was doing a stream on the. He was doing an Amstrad CPC four six four stream, and there was playing a couple of games on that. And you know what? I mean, while I do prefer the C64 and the Spectrum, more so the Commodore, the Amstrad, there's some, there's some absolutely quality titles for that. There really is. Some of the best games that he was playing for it. I, I've written four examples down where was the, the isometric game Head Over Heels by Ocean. I don't, I know, isometric games are usually a bit hit or miss for me. This is probably one of, if not the best, isometric uh, games that I've come across anyway. Yeah. So, so yeah, in that game, you, you play as two characters. Do you can combine them. Uh, you, you could play, I'd say, yeah, there are two characters. One character is called Head. Yeah. No, 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 sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was going to make a joke about that, but I won't. Uh, and then the other character is called Heels. So, uh, yeah, it's an isometric game where you, but we have to use head and heels uh, to uh, solve like uh, solve uh, puzzles out and then navigate through certain rooms. And yeah, you have to you have to use your brain to do it because, like, I say, there's some absolutely obnoxious rooms where there's there's full of horrible traps and enemies. But it's a well it's a well made game and uh, I don't know it's one it's one I would recommend to be fair doesn't matter which version it is apparently the game is quite good on the Amiga though I've never played the Amiga one so uh, that's that uh, but no but no so I know a few people are not really interested in the game head over heels because uh, it's not their cup of tea. I mean, games like that for me, as I mentioned, were a bit. I mean, they're a bit marmite. I know I'm trying to think of other isometric games. I mean, there's the isometric Batman game. Yeah, that's right. He was playing that as well. We. Yeah, fa thanks to that. That's probably why you had head over heels, which is, a, 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 a even better game because the other Batman game, the isometric one, is. Pretty good, yeah. It was released in 1986, whereas the Head Over Heels was 87. I know we're not talking about the Tears for Fears one because that was 85. Uh, from the album, uh, Songs from the Big Chair, which is uh, brilliant. But uh, getting back on topic, yeah, I, I don't know, it is a great game, though. I know some people are not interested in the game because I can imagine. Some people probably prefer head than playing that. Moving on. So the other game, again, another another game by Ocean, and it's a movie tying game. And it, this one is an absolute corker. Not on the Commodore 64, though, because uh, there's there's one level where they didn't even bother fixing it. It was a glitchy mess. But, yeah, the, the movie tying game that we're talking about is Robocop. Yeah, superb game. And uh, yeah, this was this was the very first. Believe it or not, this was the first video game 
in the UK to sell over a million copies. Yep, it was the first video game in the UK to sell over a million copies. Because apparently the first game that sold a million copies here in England was Daily Thompson's Decathlon. Hardly surprising because of how well he did in the 84 Olympics. But yeah, Robocop, it's a solid game ball. I don't know. It, it looks and plays really nice as well. Well, from both the Spectrum and Amstrad ones, because, uh... Yeah, Ocean there put a lot of, uh... Effort into it, and to be fair... Hmm, it's better than the arcade version. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I know, I, I saw a bit of fluff there on the wall. It was doing my tits in, so... Anyway, but yeah, Robocop, Robocop break game. And then, uh... Then like uh, they do like he was playing games that were like uh, May Mouse was playing like the games that were like rated as like the top best games for that console, and then the other two games, which I mean both these games were they put these games at number two. One of them I would put as my number one for the Amstrad, and for me that number one game in my opinion is Target Renegade. I mean if you if you played, I mean the original Renegade. Except for the Commodore 64 version, they're all, you know, they're, 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 they're great. And then Target Renegade, a fucking masterpiece for the the microcomputers that they want. Not so much the Commodore 64 one, that one's a bit clunky, but on the Spectrum and Amstrad, they are absolutely flawless. Absolutely flawless, if you know that song. But that is an absolute... It's an absolute corker of a beat em up. I mean, it it even gives the likes of Streets of Rage a good run for the a good run for their money. No, that is not that is not a word of exaggeration. They are that good for the systems that they were made for. Just not the Commodore sixty four one. That one's a bit, yeah. But yeah, like a Renegade, the first Renegade on the Spectrum and Amstrad. They're nine out of ten for me. A target Renegade for them? Well, the, I mean, I, I mean, giving it a ten isn't high enough. Honestly, they are just, oh god, absolutely fantastic. I love the music on it. I don't care. The music may not suit the game, but I don't know. Just something about it. And then the game that they that they ranked as the top game for the Amstrad. Do I probably might swap there on? Is is Chase HQ, which. Uh, yeah, Ocean, when, when they got their arcade conversions right, they did them in style. And honestly, I find some of them better than the original arcade versions that they're based on. So that's, that's absolutely fantastic. And I don't even know how they managed to get the digitized speech and the, like the sound effects from like uh, when, you end, when you put in like the coin. How the hell did they manage to do that for a ZX Spectrum and Amstrad? They put a lot of soul into it. And then the Commodore 64 version is a pile of massive spunk. So, uh, how how on earth can the ZX Spectrum and Amstrad, for the most part, have absolutely fantastic arcade version? And then the C64 ones by Ocean usually get absolutely shat on. Why? It's a shame. It, it really is a shame, so that's that. And uh, before I end the video, I, I I I've got I've got to show you this. Yeah, I got to show you what probably the worst football kit. This is no word of a lie. Probably the worst football kit that'll be coming out next season. Not only that, it's probably one of the absolute worst football kits of all time. And I will go and find it right now. So uh, just uh, give me a second and I will find it. So. Sorry about this. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just getting it up. Yeah, computers are, the computers are a little bit slow today because I'm doing some like updates and shit. So, guess what I'm going to show you? And did 
right, have a look at this monstrosity. This is absolutely horrific. You are not going to believe it. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm going to show you the new Barnsley kit. This is an absolute stinker. Just look at it. Look at it. What the fuck have they done? What the fuck? I mean, I don't support Barnsley, but I'm embarrassed for their fans for this. What the fuck are them stars doing there? I mean, the shirt look. I mean, the shirt look nice. I mean, the shirt would look nice if they didn't put them bloody stars on it. Fucking hell, they've really dropped the ball on that. But yeah, apparently it's based off an older uh, kit that they had in the the eighties. In fact, yeah. Here it is. Look at that. That's what the kit looked like in 1989. Absolutely insipid. Yeah, you should hang their head in shame, Puma. So, uh, so that was that. So, yeah. What did you think of that monstrosity? I can't even think of the words to describe it. So, anyway, I think I will uh, end this vlog right here. Again, I apologise for not being as active as I would have preferred to have been, but it is what it is. So, uh, I'm hoping to upload a video either this weekend or sometime next week. And uh, anyway, I will see you all very soon. I hope you all have a good day and take care of yourselves.